Guilds of Ravnica Week, Lazar the Multifarious versus Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth. Uh, we are going to keep this hand. Does this come into play untapped? No, it does not. So we can't go for a turn one brainstorm. And I always get these chrome moxes, these moxes mixed up. We can exile a non-artifact, non-land. Mm, we could go in for... Well, we'll play that tapped for a start. And I think we just go for... Chrome Mox and get rid of the Damnation. And then we can brainstorm... Oh no, we can't brainstorm because that's black mana it produces. So we'll just pass over to our opponent. Um... Yeah, our plan here is to load up our graveyard as much as we can. Not that we can do much of that with the cards that are in our hand. But once we have loaded up our graveyard, Lazar the Multifarious can be, become a copy of whatever is in the graveyard. And then we can start pulling shenanigans on our opponent. I'm going to go for a Underground Sea here. I think we go for an underground C. Is there anything else we can do? No, that always comes into play tapped. Yeah, we'll just get the dual land out. And actually, you know, I don't think we need to go for... I think we'll just go for Crucible of Worlds. There is no point in running out our commander yet. Um, we'll just... Oh, we yield to that. Yeah, we'll go for the Crucible of Worlds so we can get a land drop out every turn. And uh, then next turn we'll see what we can brainstorm. We could go for a hero's downfall on our opponent's commander if we see that this turn as well. Which we could do now that they have a white source. don't know how likely it is that they'll run it out without any protection though. Yeah. Grand Arbiter Augustine is a 2-3 for 4 mana in Azorius, and it makes white spells cost 1 less, blue spells cost 1 less, and spells that we cast cost 1 more. It's a very taxing deck, and ooh, that Stony Silence is going to hurt our Chrome Mox. Fortunately, we got down the Crucible of Worlds last turn, so we don't have to worry about mana too much. Uh, we can Rhystic Study... Uh, our opponent got down a Rhystic Study. We can Snapcast a Mage, a Brainstorm, or a Hero's Downfall. I think I want to Brainstorm first and see if we want to shuffle anything away. We can just pay the uh, Rhystic Study cost here. And we get into Traumatize is excellent. So we can put two lands on top. And shuffle those away because we have our Crucible of Worlds in play. And we'll go for the land that always comes into play tapped. And pass over to our opponent. Yeah, Traumatize flips the top half of your library upside down basically. Uh, we put half of our library into our graveyard. And that will really help with Lazar because we of course want to make creatures become copy or make Lazar become a copy of any creature in our graveyard, but we have to pay the converted mana cost of the creature we're copying. So there's uh, there's plenty of interactions that we can do with that. Uh, one of the main ones being copy Phyrexian Dreadnought and uh, have it become a 12-12 for a single mana, which is how much Phyrexian Dreadnought costs. Our opponent getting down Meddling Mage, which is going to keep us from casting Lazar. We will go for our fetch land from the graveyard. And I think we just heroes downfall to be honest. Uh, I think yeah we'll go for a basic island and then go for the heroes downfall and hope that we don't see a spell Pierce or a Force Spike or something like that. And we don't, thankfully. So I think we can write. I don't think our opponent would have uh, 
f6 through that if they had something like a spell pierce so I think we can write that out of our opponents out of our opponents hand um, I think we're gonna see a yeah Grand Arbiter Augustine so in order to snap cast a mage into hero's downfall I think that is going to cost three six seven eight nine mana wait how that three six seven eight nine what am I talking about that's three four five six seven yeah counting's hard apparently uh we can go for we'll go for Lazav here and then pay the extra one for the Ristic study we'll say yes to that looks like our opponent's struggling for cards which is fine with us we'll surveil and we'll put the windfall on top so that we can actually draw into that don't know if we're actually going to windfall but if we're desperate for new cards and our opponent refills their hand then we might as well take advantage of them having a full grip can uh, give us a full grip in return windfall doesn't just give you seven new cards it depends on the uh, the number of card the most number of cards that are discarded that way so if our opponent does manage to refuel their hand then we can take advantage of that with windfall and curse of exhaustion we can't cast more than one turn more than one spell each turn I'm not sure how much that affects us to be honest I think we're just going to be going for a traumatize next turn and unfortunately we'll have to do something other than yeah I think we I think we just have to go for traumatize here and start actually doing something unfortunately we won't be able to play the Ristic study uh, pay for the Ristic studies tax so that will give our opponent yeah that will give our opponent a card draw and they might draw into counter magic but they don't so while star opponent is having their turn we can just have a look at what we've just milled and auto yield there alright so we have Glenalandra Archmage uh, what is that? Lutail Corse so that's an unblockable creature Torrential Gear Hulk does nothing uh, what else do we have? Sire of Stagnation, unfortunately, isn't that great. Wall of Souls is good if our opponent swings in with a big creature, and we have a means of giving it infect. Uh, Grim Grin is part of a combo. We have Fades the Untouchable, so we can actually go for Fades the Untouchable and uh, Luta El Core. And um, what do we have now? We can go for the... Hmm, I think... I think our opponent is scared of our commander because they just wiped the board with Day of Judgment which got rid of their own creature. So I think... Do we have a swamp? Yes, we'll just go for a swamp here. We do have Tech Edge in the graveyard as well which is worth noting but our opponent doesn't have any on basics so I think what we'll do is try and get our commander back out and then we can pay one on the Ristic study and surveil one there's a land that can go into our graveyard don't mind that and then we can hedron crab Oh no, we can't because we can't play more than one spell each turn. That's fine. We'll just uh, turn Lazarv into a Luta Ilkor at the end of our opponent's turn. And then we can go for Fades the Untouchable. I think I saw, yeah. So for seven mana, we can turn Lazarv into Fades the Untouchable. And as soon as it hits our opponent, we win the game. They may well have some more removal for us. Okay, Gideon, I don't think, does it. Ah, prevent all damage that a target permanent would deal. Yes, okay. 
So that, in fact, does do it. And that actually is a bit of a pain for us. We could really do with getting rid of Gideon then. Which might mean Cyclonic Rift into Snapcaster Mage into Counter. Yeah, I think we have to do that then. Although Snapcaster Mage, yeah, thanks to this Curse of Exhaustion, we won't be able to Snapcaster Mage into a Counter spell. So we just have to draw one. Uh, yeah, that's an issue for us. I think we just have to try and mill ourselves. I just want to double check that we don't have anything with Hexproof. Ah, Invisible Stalker, we do have something with Hexproof. So I actually could have, we could have gone to win this turn then. Had I have actually seen the Invisible Stalker, yeah, that's a real... That's that's uh that's annoying. We could have gone into the invisible stalker and then gone for phage the untouchable this turn. Unfortunately we do give our opponent another means of doing something there. We might top deck into something that gets rid of Lazard for us. Which I'm sure they would love to try and do. Getting rid of Tunnel Vision and Notion Thief there. No point swinging in with the Lazav. Um, before our opponent's turn is up, we will do what we should have done last turn and go for the Invisible Stalker. I didn't spot that last turn. And I don't like to keep our opponents waiting while I'm looking through my graveyard because they do just tend to scoop if you take too long, I find. Let's see what we get here. Okay, it's a Fairy Temporal Art Mage. Uh, we can actually, we can Cyclonic Rift the Gideon. Actually, why don't we just get rid of the Curse of Exhaustion instead? Then we have the option of getting rid of, yeah. If our opponent decides to untap things with Teferi, then they can get the uh, the curse back out, but I don't mind them using their turn to do that, to be honest. I imagine they're more wanting to use Teferi as uh, as card draw. But if they want to un choose to untap... Yeah, so going for the Lazav again, and we are going to respond by going for... make sure we hit the right card. Invisible Stalker which will give it Hexproof and Unblockable and therefore fizzle Gideon's ability and we'll actually be able to get some damage through next turn and our opponent now needs a 2 mana board wipe or a means of forcing us to bounce or sacrifice Lazav I don't think they can do it now but we'll soon find out And uh, our opponent just deciding on which cards to put on the bottom of their library. Oh, they only they put one card in their hand, one card on the bottom of their library. So they're just deciding which ones. They don't necessarily know what I'm looking to do with Lazav next turn, but this is one of the one of the combos that you can use with Lazav, and it looks like we're going to get that through. So we will. Just go straight into it, make sure to swing at our opponent. And as soon as blockers are declared, we will go and target Page the Untouchable. That will cost 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6 and 7 mana. But it will take Hexproof off of it. And yeah, there we go. Because we hit our opponent with Page the Untouchable, we win the game. Uh, you do open yourself up a little bit there. Uh, we could have been Swords to Plowshared, uh, Path to Exiled, something like that there. But we managed to get out a win. It's exactly what Lazard wants to do. Uh, load up the graveyard and then become copies of creatures in graveyards, or in your graveyard. And uh, 
yeah, shenanigans ensue from there. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Hope you're enjoying Guilds of Ravnica week. More where this came from. I'll see you next time.